So we never really anticipated actually filming a sort of in session piece. The reason that we came to Burners in the in the first place was to uh, to film some products. We had we had a few products to to film the F box uh, magnetic rig box. Um, a new sleeping bag cover and the main reason that we had came was the Cartmaster Air unhooking mat and the reason that we came here it had been fishing well and the idea was to catch a, a fish to uh, to demonstrate the, the mat and it's turned out better than we could have ever expected. So I got here around eight o'clock on the Monday morning met up with Brad in the uh, in the car park and had a little bit of a walk along the the dam wall just to suss out um, where it was free and, and where we could go and, and hopefully to get on some fish anyway halfway along that that bank um, I managed to uh, to spot a carp sort of out the corner of my eye show um, pretty much in the middle area of of this half of the lake um, between the uh, the dam wall and the island, pretty much in the, in the middle area, accessible from quite a few few swims. There was a couple of guys over on the other side um, fishing, so I thought I'd come round uh, to this bank and uh, and see if if they were accessible from there. And I've come and stood into in in this swim, and what must have been in a similar area to where that fish had, had showed saw another one show it and that was it that was enough said to brad right let's go and as we went um we've seen another one show a little bit off to the to the right sort of in the swim next door so we kn knew that that was the right area and um it's a bonus that it's on sort of on the on the back of the wind sheltered uh sheltered away because it has been freezing it has been really really cold um a horrible easterly northeasterly wind it's been two or three degrees um the wind's been really strong and it's been raining on and off since we've been here so it's been it's been hard to get any sort of work done it's been hard to um to film the products but yeah we've managed to get there we're at the end of it all now and um we've managed to get our work done and we caught some pretty cool fish so the first thing that i did was I just chucked out three solid bags of maggots to the area that I'd seen the fish uh, showing. That seemed to be, to be the uh, the best line of attack, and then I was going to find a spot a little bit later on and uh, and maybe apply some bait. So that's what I did. And anyway, one of those rods uh, with a bag of maggots ripped off, and uh, yeah, started the started the session really really well. Probably had the rods out maybe three hours. And I've just had the first bite. It's come to a solid bag of maggots with a, a maggot hook bait. And yeah, it feels half decent. I've managed to steer it away from the island, which it almost went right behind. And um, it's getting close now. So hopefully I can get this one in and I can show you a few things that I do in the winter to keep bites coming. So there we go, 20 pound, 13 ounces of lovely Burners Hall mirror carp, caught on a maggot bag as I said, and I'll, uh, yeah, I'll run you through that and a few other 
little tips that I have for catching carp in the winter. Right, so as you can see, it's got dark um, pretty quickly as uh, as it does at this time of year. But this is the uh, this is the rig that I've used to catch that fish, and probably the rig that I use the majority of the time in the winter because I do like fishing solid bags um, of maggots, and I do like a little ma maggot hook bait. So yeah, this this is it. I've got um, got naked line straight through to the. Um, to the inline lead which is fished uh, drop-off style using the um, edges drop-off kit so you've got a plug that plugs in the top there and that goes on the back of the double ring swivel and just plugs in the top there so that's nice and safe that's going to um, gonna drop off when I get a bite um, or when it comes into contact with any uh, any weed or anything like that. Coming down from that, I've got 15 pound reflex camo. It's the light camo version. Um, and then that goes down to a size five wide gate beat. Now I use the wide gate beat or the stiff rig beat um, for this rig. It, it really doesn't matter to me. It's whatever comes out of the box first. Um, the hooking properties are still exactly the same. And then a tiny piece of hook silicon just trapping the hair and then I've got a piece of plastic corn there now I'll use either a plastic piece of plastic corn or a little 8 or 10 mil pop up um, again that doesn't really matter to me um, the only reason uh, that I've got it there is one for a little bit of buoyancy and two to separate the maggots from the hook um, and then as you can see there I've got um, five maggots just sat on top there and basically how I've done that I've got a standard hair that's uh, that goes into the uh, piece of plastic corn and then I've pierced with a fine baiting needle the maggots and just threaded them on uh, to a piece of bait floss I've then put the bait bait floss through the loop on the hair and tied it off using a couple of granny knots and um, yeah that's enough to hold it nice and nice and tight in there and um, make it the perfect little hook bait to go inside my solid bags. The way I tie, the, tie them up is with the rapid loader and basically what I'll do is I'll make sure that everything is as dry as possible and, and so that involves making sure I dab everything down on a recast, um, the lead and everything, I make sure it's as dry as possible. I'll drop it into some krill powder just to soak up any extra moisture and that'll be the hook bait and all because when you're piercing those maggots to put them on obviously they burst and moisture comes out of them so it's very very important that you dry them out using something like krill powder or a ground bait or maize flour something like that to make sure that it doesn't make melt the PVA when it goes in the bag. I'll then get the uh, solid bag on the loading tool and drop a little bit of powder, krill powder, in the bottom of the bag. I'll then drop my rig in and I'll poke the hook. You'll see the hook is protruding from the bottom of the bag. I'll actually poke it through the bottom of the bag and that is to make sure that no maggots get impaled on the hook. Um, so then I'll drop a pinch of maggots in, I'll drop the lead uh, down, make sure that it's nice and central and then fill the rest up with maggots, making sure that the lead is central at all times so that it will cast um, as well as possible. Uh, then it's a simple case of making sure it's nice and compact, twisting, wetting around the edge of the, the uh, PVA that's left on the loading tool, pushing it back over the top, and then folding down the corners, uh, licking them and sticking them uh, back up the seam line of the PVA. And uh, yeah, and then it's then it's ready to get to go. And like I said, you can chuck it out at, um, at showing fish or over bait. It's great on venues that see a lot of maggots, and you are just chucking it out as a single because the fish will be switched onto the maggots, and they'll see that small parcel of uh, of bait. They'll go down. Your hook bait will come up with the first suck that they do, and uh, and you'll nail them every time. So as it does at this time of year, it got dark pretty rapidly. Um, and to be honest, it looked like we were gonna be getting our heads down pretty pretty 
sharpish really we had our had our dinner and yeah i was probably in bed by half eight something like that as as is kind of the way on the long winter nights you feel tired very very early so anyway brad's had a bite he's had a uh, a, a mid double mirror really nice fish and um yeah as he slipped that back one of my rods has gone and all the way in it just didn't really do a lot it didn't um it didn't power off um it wasn't taking any any large amounts of line but it just felt heavy and then it was plodding around out in front of me and and i knew it was decent anyway it's it's popped up in front of me i've seen that it's a common landed it shattered over to to brad's yeah yeah i've got a, got a decent common thinking probably a probably a low 30 maybe 32 33 something something like that anyway the the fish just grew and grew the more that we looked at it i folded up the uh, the mesh rolled it down and as i've gone to pull it out of the water it's just the fish has just seemed enormous and uh and just the the more i looked at it the the bigger it grew we've got it on the on the mat and i think we both said to each other this is this is a serious serious carp it just looks huge my pb common was 35 and a half pounds and yeah it looked seriously in threat and lifted it up on the scales and yeah absolutely made up could not believe it 39.6 oh mate oh, I what before. the hell no Well, that is what 39 pounds and six ounces of Burners Hall Common looks like. It's my new PB Common. Oh, I'm absolutely speechless. I can't, I can't believe it. Never did I expect on this little short filming session for us to uh, to catch well anything really, and uh, yeah, to have a couple of bites and a and a PB common that is absolutely spellbinding. Yeah, mega, absolutely mega. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Oh, I've got to put it down. Um, yeah, awesome. So we did, the, we did the photos and everything in the dark, got it back, got the rod back out um, and, and settled down for the, for the rest of the night. It probably wasn't until three o'clock in the morning that i had my next bite um i had two bites in quite quick succession one of them uh came off i landed the other one that was a small double um and i just just got that one back and then yeah first light yeah i've had another bite and another bite straight after that as well you know the uh the fish by that time had got on on my bait i had put out some um some maggots i was now fishing my bags over the top of the maggots rather than as singles on on their own and and, and they had, they had got on the bait and had a lovely scaly double and a 28 pounder which was absolutely awesome that's not a bad one to start the morning with an absolutely gorgeous mid double mirror lovely red hinges to its belly and uh this isn't the only one that i've had this morning had a couple more last night that i put back um i did lose one as well so yeah it's been um been a pretty eventful session i'm gonna put this one back and and get the other one out how about that for an absolute banger proper lovely scaly 28 and a half pound mirror brilliant way to conclude a little bit of filming on uh on burners hall and and proof that you know with decent location and uh and a bit of thought when it comes 
to your presentation and your bait, you can get really, really good results when the uh, when the temperatures plummet. And uh, and yeah, once again, I've got my rods back out, and not long after that, I had another one, a 29 pound, 11 ounce scaly mirror. Well, I thought that was my lot, but just as I slipped that last fish back, this one ripped off 29.11. What a, what a mega, mega session. My hands are absolutely freezing. It's two degrees, horrible easterly wind, and um, yeah, catching fish like this, it's uh, yeah, amazing. Awesome. Just to round off a session that I never thought was gonna pan out that way. We literally came to catch a fish and with the conditions that that we've had, that's all that's all we expected. Or we didn't even expect a fish. We we just were hoping for a fish to get this this unhooking map video fin finished and uh yeah for it to turn out to be a real cold <laughs> but awesome red letter session was more than i could have hoped for